I'm Julia Child. Welcome to my house. What fun we're going to have baking all kinds of incredible cakes, pies, and breads right here in my own kitchen. Pastry chef Gail Gand puts her training as an artist to good use in creating such delightful desserts as this towering Napoleon and this fettuccine ice cream sandwich. Learn how to do it on Baking with Julia. This magnificent dessert is a chocolate Napoleon, and it has all kinds of things in it. It has a chocolate ganache and a whipped cream with ginger in it and poached pears and chocolate phyllo dough. And this is all the invention of Gail Gant, who's going to show us every bit of how to make it. Every stage of it. Every stage of it. Good. We're going to start out with the phyllo. Usually when you buy phyllo dough, it comes frozen and comes in a box. Mm -hmm. you buy it at the grocery store. Yeah. And you can keep it in the freezer frozen. The night before you want to use it, I usually mm -hmm. pull it out and put it in the fridge, let it thaw overnight real slow. I know if you leave it in the fridge, it begins to mildew, because I did that once, and I could never get the smell out of the oh, fridge. Oh, really? OK. <laughs> what I do is just cut the package open and mm -hmm. reveal our pastry. There it is. It's usually wrapped in sort of a wax paper to help protect it. Mm -hmm. I never work with. Philo, I've done puff pastry things, so I'm, I'm delighted to know about this. Just open it up, and if you've thawed it correctly, you'll have nice... See how nice and separate these sheets are? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to peel back. It's mm -hmm. like bed sheets, kind of. Mm -hmm. Just sort of... No. Now, one of the things that happens with phyllo is it tends to dry out if you leave it in open air. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover it up with a towel. And that always you read about it, they say it should be a damp towel, but you found the opposite. I don't you? really like using a damp towel because no. I find it sort of creates moist pockets and mm -hmm. makes it a little bit soggy. So I just keep a regular towel. Yeah, and that, and that, well, as we'll see, we'll see that it keeps it moist. Right. So this is how we're going to leave it while we get our, I call it cocoa butter going, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to mix um, a quarter cup of cocoa. Is this Dutch processed cocoa? This is, yes. And then we're going to blend in with that a half a cup of melted butter. Now, normally I use clarified butter, but yeah. you can also use just melted butter. Just but you don't go down to the Make sure you don't go down substitute. too far. So this yeah. is really clarified. It's sort of a quickie clarification. Yeah, but there's no... No milk solids or yeah. none of those milk liquids that you'll yeah. see in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Just pour it in with the cocoa. And I just mix it with my pastry brush. So this is sort of a... Not a tanning cocoa butter, but a, an edible cocoa butter. OK, we'll put that here. Now what I want to do with my phyllo is I'm going to cut these sheets in half so they fit onto my sheet pan. There we go. And we're going to take the first one. See how easy that mm -hmm. is? And just place it on the sheet pan. You want to cover the pastry back up when you're not using it. No. Put it back to rest. And I drizzle a little bit on first. Mm -hmm. And then Looks you're going like to brush. like a Jackson Pollock painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All that art school paid off, see? And we just carefully brush it. And then we're going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar across the whole surface. Just like that. Pretty liberally. Mm -hmm. And later, that sort of helps it get crunchy once you bake it in the oven. How much would you say is that about? Well, Sorry, I think that's much about a tablespoon. Than... Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to repeat that. Grab another sheet. See, it's still staying nice and separate. If you do have a spot that seems to be sticking, you just kind of work it out with your hands. Pick it up. Well, if you had a little tear, it wouldn't make any difference. It really doesn't, because oh. you've got a bunch of layers. Yeah. That'll cover it up. Again, just drizzle. I know this is supposed to be work, but it kind of looks like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. How many layers are we going to have? We're going to do three. So that's our second one. Okay, and we'll do one more. And normally I would bake two layers. And what I mean by that is once I get this together, I stick another piece of parchment on top, mm -hmm. and then I do it again. Mm -hmm. so I'm right. actually baking off a bunch at no. one time, and it kind of saves you room in the oven. 
I usually just do two sets, one on top no. of each mm -hmm. other, because you've got the heat of the metal pan from underneath. It cooks the underneath layer. No. And then we're going to weight it on top with another pan, the metal pan. Mm -hmm. So the heat from this metal pan is going to help cook the top layer. Very clever. So now we're going to put this in the oven. OK. okay. We're going to bake it at 350. People always ask, how long do you bake things? And I always say, till it's done. But it's about 8 to 10 minutes. We're going to poach some pears now. Good. And I've got two cups of sugar in the pan here already. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a cup of wine to that. This is white wine. Well, that's nice. Dry white, I guess. A dry white wine. Yeah. The sugar actually sweetens it. We'll add four cups of water. That helps give it some liquid to bob around in. Yeah. And some orange rind to flavor it. I just cut the peel right off. Mm -hmm. Big hunk of it, big ribbon of the rind. Having the white stuff doesn't bother you because we're not going to eat it anyway, are we? No, basically we're going for those oils that are yeah. in the skin mm -hmm. of the orange to give it the orange flavor. And then I just use a little bit of the juice. Thank the you. juice helps keep the pears from going brown. Right? Take one vanilla bean. We're just going to cut it in half so we can get to the good stuff inside in it. There. Drop that in. And a couple cinnamon sticks Some for cinnamon flavor. Stick. We'll bring that to a simmer while I'm peeling the pears. So I've got three of them here. I'm going to take the peel off so that the flavor of the poaching liquid can really get into the pear. Mm -hmm. Are these fully ripe pears? These are. These are what, really what nice are these ones? ones. Are they cummies or what? This, I believe, or is a Bartlett pear. A Bartlett, yeah. To core them, to take the seeds and stuff mm -hmm. out, I just use a melon baller. Just That's a good idea. Go yeah. in there and it takes That's most it of the completely. undesirable out. Yeah. And then just do a little trimming. Take that core, take the stem out, and just pull. And you kind of get mm -hmm. that little string out, too. And drop it right and in. Go. Go in the bath. Do one more. So I cover it with a little bit oh, of wax paper. Well, that's a good idea. So and that keeps the air from getting mm -hmm. to the pears while they're cooking, so they're in a moist well, environment. that's a good idea. Do you think the dough follow is done? I think we should check it and see if it is. Oh, yeah. Well, how are we can... That looks done. Let's the take, it, take are... it out and show how we can see. Okay. Got what? it. What you're looking for... It's a little bit of browning on the edge. It's hard to tell because it's brown anyway. Yeah. See how the pastry's looking a little golden there? Oh, mm, it's, it's it really smells of chocolate too, doesn't it? You can smell the chocolate, and we've got mm. both layers there. You can see the bottoms cooked yeah. too. We'll let that cool a little while. Mm -hmm. And I want to do the cranberry compote next. Oh, yes. OK. I'm going to use one cup of cranberries. Mm -hmm. Just put them in there. And, and the, the frozen cranberries would be OK because they're you get fine. Them, you know. That's one cup of orange juice. And fresh orange juice, not from concentrate. And then a quarter cup of sugar. And bring that to a boil. Just mix it up a little bit there. Mm -hmm. We're going to cook that down. Yes. We're looking for the skins to break. Mm -hmm. okay. And what that does is helps kind of thicken the sauce a little Do bit. It. While that's cooking, we can break our phyllo dough up. And we're looking for sort of jagged shards. Mm -hmm. OK, so all you need to do it's very hard to do this wrong. You just take your phyllo and kind of crack it off. You want a big, a big piece. Big hunk like no. that. You usually can get about six out of a sheet. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? It's just, just I think we should taste one piece and see if, we, if, see if it's, we like it. Mm. It's very crispy. Mm. It's crisp and sweet and chocolatey. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Mm. That was a great invention. You want to try breaking some? Mm -hmm. Let's see if it works for you. Yeah. Easy. Little piece that you'd have to eat. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's delicious. It's so. That's it. It's nicer than puff pastry because it's so. Crisp, I think. And it's very thin, mm -hmm. which is nice. And easy to do. Let's 
check how these are doing. Almost there. See how they're starting to expand? And then uh, as soon as they pop, they're done? Yep. Oh. But they all have to pop, not just one. All of them, no. Now that these are done, we're going to pour them into a bowl so they can cool. Ooh, they're pretty, aren't they? Nice color. Mm, they, they smell come out good great. Too. Let's check the pears and see how they're doing. Let's that was a good idea covering them with the pepper. And it helps them keep from oxidizing. So. Ooh, that's. Ooh, that looks real tender. They look yep. ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll turn the heat off. Just let them cool right in their liquid, then they absorb the flavor. Mm -hmm. It's like making tea in there. Yeah, it is exactly. Next, we're going to make the mocha ganache to go inside. And that goes inside. Right. Oh, lovely. I take half a cup of cream. Mm, that looks nice and thick, Heavy yeah. Heavy cream, yeah. Heavy cream, my best friend. Mm -hmm. And half a cup of milk. Really? And I'm going to bring this to a boil. Mm -hmm. I want to flavor it with a little bit of coffee. One and tablespoon of coffee. Coffee and chocolate together make mocha. Is That's that right. It? Yeah. This is ground coffee, just regular. A regular. What you make your breakfast morning uh -huh. coffee out of. And then I add a third a cup of sugar. Okay. That would make a nice mixture, I think. Get that little stir. And let that come to a boil. Then we want to chop up our chocolate. Mm-hmm. This is a bittersweet chocolate I've got. Yeah, this is an imported one. This is from Venezuela. Uh-huh. I've got 10 ounces here. You just rough chop it. There we go. OK. Get this in the bowl. I was breaking it up just obviously because it will melt faster. That's right. Yeah. This is already starting to boil. Basically, what ganache is, is cream and chocolate. Mm -hmm. well, that's all. That's it. All right, we're coming to a boil. So that's going to bring out the flavor in the coffee. Mm -hmm. it's all right. I can already smell it. It's nice. And all it needs to do is to come to the boil. That's it. OK. Ready? Yep. I'm just going to strain it over this chocolate. That helps strain out the coffee grounds. Mm -hmm. And all you do is just whisk. Just stir it around. Just whisk it around, and the hot milk and cream melts that chocolate. It's beautiful already. See how nice and smooth that gets? Mm -hmm. And once that chills, it kind of sets and gets uh -huh. real fudgy. And... Mm -hmm. All right, we can set that aside now. Now we're going to make the ginger cream. This is basically just a whipped cream, a little bit of sugar, and ginger. So I got one cup of cream there. And we're going to peel some fresh ginger. Just use a knife. Peel it, yeah. And I use one of these graters, like a yeah. Parmesan cheese mm -hmm. grater, and just grate it right in. That's a good idea to put it's in. It's easy. I don't think people use enough ginger. And we're going to add some brown sugar, two tablespoons. I use brown sugar a lot instead of white sugar. It just has a little nice, more flavor. Yeah, it does have flavor. Yeah. And then we just whip this up. Gives you that sort of warm molasses taste. No. Almost there. There we go. See how it's so kind of stiff that. and holds peaks? Let me try. See if it's any good. See if you no. like the ginger level. You like mm. that? Mm. It's subtle. Okay. It's nice. Mm -hmm. It'll come out a little more. Listen, as it it's interesting. Ginger flavor comes out mm. after you had it in your mouth. Yeah. It? That's, that's interesting. Good. Delicious. Now we're ready to assemble the dessert. First, we're going to start by draining some of the pears off. Mm. I like to get rid of some of that liquid so it doesn't make your dessert soggy. So we'll just leave one here. That looks there perfectly poked Isn't and they nice? remain nicely white. The way we plate this up, we're going to take a little ganache. So this is the chilled ganache. Mm -hmm. They come out nice. And I put a dab yeah. down, oh. kind of as glue. Yes. Helps the phyllo nice stick to the plate. Glue. And just push that first layer down. Yeah. OK. And now we're going to top it with a little more. There we go. So that's the first mm -hmm. layer. And we like to cut these pears. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fan them. Just do a little slices, oh, sort of a quarter inch they apart. Look right, don't they? They came out really perfect. Mm -hmm. It's because we have two chefs in the kitchen today. Yeah. 
There we go. So, just place it in your hand and kind of fan mm -hmm. out those mm -hmm. layers. That's lovely. And place it as on we top. Say, Chefs have impeccably clean fingers, though they have to, because a lot of this you can't do with <laughs> instruments, I guess. Next thing we want to do. Beautiful cream. Put a little bit of ginger cream on top. Mm. For contrast. And even and just texture. like that would just, be nice. Yes, you could serve it? one layer. Yeah. So we're going to top it with one. Three. And build it up. We're going to repeat mm -hmm. that again. Vertical cuisine. Well, I think because I'm so short, you know, always sort of building up. No. Yeah. I'm very envious of your height. One more pear fanned out. Oh, that's that that pear it looks absolutely delicious. Topple it? over no. there. A little more ginger cream. Mm -hmm. And then the final phyllo on top. And you can see, you can that's choose any cute. slice. Yes. There you go. No. That's the cranberries we made. Mm -hmm. It's a nice accompaniment, very pretty. Kind of sharp, tart mm -hmm. flavor that goes well with the chocolate and the ginger. Mm. Grand finale. A little bit of mint. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of show off the layers, I do a little powdered sugar. Well, that's a good Right idea. at the edge. That's lovely. There you go. Now are we going to eat it? We're going to eat it. Now it's right. one of those desserts you have to kind of dive, just dive well, right you into started, it. Now. All right. There you go. Cut through that crispy, how crispy that came out. Mm. There we go. Give it mm. a try. Well, that's a real dessert. That's beautiful. And it isn't heavy. Very light. Mm -hmm. And see mm -hmm. all the different textures going on in your mouth? It's just that crispy and the mm -hmm. soft of the pear and the light and all cream. All that chocolate and, and the, the little, chocolate. little ginger. Great. Thanks ever so much. Oh, I'm glad you like it. This colorful dessert is known as a fettuccine ice cream sandwich, and our chef Gail Gann is going to show us exactly how to make it. Great. I've got some uh, phyllo here that's left from the last dessert we did, and with this one you don't have to unroll it and oh. do the towel and everything. Mm -hmm. You just leave it all rolled up right in its wax no. paper, and we're going to cut slices a quarter inch thick. That first Leaving slice you don't really use. Leaving on, Leave the, on the paper. Leaving on the paper. I'll get it off later, I promise. No. We just cut the size of fettuccine noodles. No. This is just the way you'd make fettuccine anyway, isn't is that it? Is how you roll it up like that and cut no. it? And now, if I just kind of fluff it, and you can see see how the wax paper is pretty you easy know. to pull off. You know. Let's pull yeah. that out. And you just kind of aerate it and mm -hmm. fluff it up there and it looks yeah. like a big pile of noodles. Yeah, it does, that? exactly. All right. And now I can use these strands to make nests. Oh, now this is another one of your inventions. That's right. <laughs> so now we're going to just spatter them with a little butter. And you're just spattering. Well, you couldn't paint it. So you don't really no need you to. You don't want too much, uh -huh. Right. And you don't want to pat them down. You know, you want that's that. a very good idea. That you want them fluffy, so just a little brush spatter. Drizzle. A little more Jackson Pollock there. <laughs> and then sprinkle with a little, a little sugar. sugar. No. Just like maybe a quarter teaspoon per, mm -hmm. per nest. We can put this in the oven now. Okay. What is it going in? 350. How long does that take? About 8 to 10, 5 yep. to 10, yep. but I keep my eye on it. Okay, next thing we want to do, we're going to make the raspberry filling. My favorite fruit is raspberries, so I, I use it them, yes. everywhere possible. What I'm going to do is julienne two leaves of mint, fold them in half, that's what I do. Well, and that's then a good idea for julienne, isn't I it? I just slice very thin, and I mm -hmm. use my fingernail to lean my knife against, mm -hmm. and that helps me space my julienne mm -hmm. so that it's very fine. Okay, that last little bit that's got the stem, i leave mm -hmm. that out. Yeah. Just put that in your berries. And then I add about a quarter cup of raspberry puree that we made mm -hmm. this morning, but I added a little bit of sugar to it just to mm -hmm. sweeten it because they were quite tart. Mm -hmm. And that was about a quarter of a cup, but it's just enough to kind of dress mm -hmm. the berries. Is this a whole little basket like a little? This is two cups. No, yeah, two cups. Okay. And you're just getting them shiny and mm -hmm. dressing them Kinds like a nice little, little fruit bit. salad. Yeah. 
then we're going to make a little sauce to go with it. So I've got one cup of heavy cream here and one tablespoon of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. I just, I always use brown sugar you instead know, well, of white sugar when I can. Flavor, it? And, it gives and you, it don't little... really, you don't really need vanilla when you have That's a good brown point. sugar, do you? Mm -hmm. It gives a little color, too. Mm -hmm. You're going to whop the cream? I'm going to whop the cream. <laughs> Wonderfully fast. There you go. See how it still mm. kind of drips. All right. The other thing we need is a fruit skewer to go on the top. Uh huh. That's sort of the toothpick that holds the whole oh, sandwich together. That's a good idea. Yeah. So let's make one of those. We just got a regular wooden skewer here. Mm -hmm. And the berries we got today, we've got blueberries, a good raspberry, one of these blackberries. Mm -hmm and a strawberry with a nice green bit. Mm -hmm. there you so are. we'll use Good. that for the garnish. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's check the peel out in the oven. Let's check and see if they're ready. Oh, they're nice and sure, they? Oh, they look great. Let's There's put them a on rack. a cooling rack. A rack for you. Thank you. Those are perfect. Well, those are so Aren't they nice and now, light? Now, how far ahead could you bake those? You could do them the day before. Really? And let them cool on the pan, and then just cover it with plastic wrap. Keep them airtight. Yeah. And then you could always crisp them again in the oven, that's I guess. That's Well, that's fun, isn't it? And it really looks like... Doesn't look like fettuccine? fettuccine? Yes. We're going to plate this up now and make one of our little sandwiches. Got that brown sugar cream to sauce the plate and just kind of drizzle it around. And then decorate that with a little bit of the leftover raspberry puree. Mm. Put a little glue in the center yeah. so it doesn't slip around. That's such a good idea. And we'll take one of our nests, mm -hmm. put it down the center. So we'll make a bed of the raspberries. Mm -hmm. It's okay if a couple of them tumble off to the side. And those look awfully nice with that little bit of sauce on them. Really makes them glisten and mm -hmm. look fresh. And, but it's all they need, mm -hmm. not much more. There we go. And we'll top it with some ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. All right, this is vanilla. But you could use almond or... Or caramel. Yeah. No. Cinnamon might be good. Cinnamon might be good. There we go. Mm. And then a lid. Let's pick out a good one. This one. Mm, that nice. looks lovely. Set that on top. <laughs> now, to secure it, <laughs> to gingerly stab this through. Oh, I think that's and then charming. I slide down the berries so it fits mm -hmm. nice and tight. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's, and it couldn't be simpler, could it? Isn't that great? Gosh. Gail, yeah, this has been wonderful. Thank you. And you've even gotten me enthused myself. I'm going to use Philo Philo tomorrow. I have a feeling you're going to start cooking with I it really now. I really have. Good, good. Thanks Thank you so, so much. much. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. Bon appétit